what's up guys today the king's fall raid makes its return to destiny 2 and in this video i'll be going over the best weapons and loadouts you should be using in the raid obviously there will be a lot of changes to the raid that we don't know yet but this will be based off the d1 version of the raid and the encounters will be mostly the same obviously the same layout so i think the same weapon types will be good for the same reasons and throughout this video i'll be going over what i'm going to be using in general then going through every single encounter in the raid and talking about what i think will be the best and for what reasons so beginning with just like in general what i'm gonna be using i'm gonna be using the solar warlock for mostly well along with just this entire kit i still think it is one of the best in-game kits in the game with the starfire build so just messing through what i'm using i'm gonna be using empowering rift for starfire I might change that to healing rift if i need but then i have the pretty basic setup that everyone's been using since last season and i want to use this one because of well for boss fights but also i just think the infinite fusion aids is just still so strong the other thing that is definitely super important is having tier 100 tier 10 resilience for that 40 percent damage reduction which is a game changer for hard content in the game if you're not running this you're playing a different game to be honest and as mentioned i'll be using the starfire protocol for the infinite fusion nades and infinite rifts what made this combo so broken last season was the classy restoration artifact mod which turned the scene into like a mobile well also when you put it down with that constant extreme health regen which is no longer a thing what we can do is use the same journal mods bountiful wells ordnance and explosive but now we can use well of life when we pick up the solar element wells we will get constant health regen for 10 seconds not as strong as classy restoration but still pretty good and with King's Fall, you're going to be killing things really far away most of the time. So using Seek and Well as our fifth one to make them come towards us and our allies will be extremely good. So not only will this work for us, it will also work for our teammates as long as they have something like Well of Life on to take advantage of these sort of wells. You'll get kills with your grenades all over the place and they'll spawn the sort of wells and they'll track towards you and your allies. So that will be really good for every encounter in the raid because a lot of the encounters are very much so kind of far range encounters. And that is what I plan on using. There's a chance I might pull over the Osteo plus Necrotic Crypt combo, which I try to show off in this footage, but Dim is taking forever to move stuff. So it wasn't in my inventory yet, but I used that in Vow and it worked extremely well to keep ads under control for my entire team. So depending on how the encounters change, if there's a lot more ads than there used to be, I might pull that out. So for this, I'm gonna be using old footage from Modern, which is a fellow member of Redeem. And this is from one of their speedruns back in the day. I'm gonna go ahead and link his Twitch down below. He'll definitely be streaming the World's First Race today. But we just use his footage to show off the different counters and what I think will work the best. Starting off with the opening counter, there isn't too much to talk about here. It's just your general opening counter for a raid. And another thing to note is I'm not gonna be breaking down mechanics necessarily in this video. If there's a mechanic that needs to be talked about for explaining why I'm using a certain weapon, I will. But this is not a tutorial by any means, just talking about what I think will work well. So in this encounter, really the only things that matter is you have to run around and pick up relics and bring them back to the middle. So it's mostly just a movement encounter. So you can use something like a sword with Eager's Edge and make sure to use like any movement exotics you can. For example, Traverse the Steps or something like Icarus Stash on Warlock to move a little bit quicker. Now, outside of that, the weapons don't really matter. There are a few sections of ad clear and a few majors along the way. So maybe using something like a fusion to quickly burst them down, even a shotgun, blinding geo, whatever it is would all work. The one thing that there is to note is you might need like a ranged weapon of some sort. So like a scout or even a sniper to break the walls that come up for your teammates. And usually they're pretty far away. You're not gonna be close to them most time. So you might need, you know, a scout or a linear or whatever it is to quickly break that for them because if you're using an smg or a shotgun it's gonna be pretty hard to do that so that's one thing to keep in mind but this encounter is pretty straightforward nothing really to talk about and and i don't think it'll really matter what you use then after that is the jumping puzzle with the ships and once again for this mostly just movement stuff so a eager edge sword to like make up for mistakes or if you fall off could be really good using obviously all the movement stuff you can, Icarus Stash, whatever that is. Then I'm gonna be personally using the Dawnblade Super, which you can float and fly really far with. And I'm not sure if it's far enough to make it across without using the ships. I can't remember off the top of my head, 
but it could be so you might so there might be a way to skip the entire encounter for your team doing that but even if it doesn't that's just gonna be a great way to like make up for mistakes like i said before or skip certain sections of this puzzle but once again nothing much to talk about outside of the movement stuff for this encounter pretty straightforward so getting to the first real encounter of the raid which is the totems this encounter is pretty interesting and the stuff i think that will work really good for this is kind of ranged weapons because when you're on the side totems or even in the middle you're mostly shooting at things that are pretty far away so using something like an smg probably won't work at all in this encounter and there's also knights that spawn in on the top part of the encounter that are really far away so using like a sniper a linear a scout all are things that make sense to me for this encounter then when you're in the middle there's usually heavy actors so running a super that helps with big group actor would be really good for example like storm car with crown of tempest which lasts forever could be really good when you're in the mid even something like teller just to lock everything down also be extremely strong but the key things to know about totems is you definitely want a ranged weapon so like a scout with firefly or scout with explosive payload would be really good along with a sniper or something like a linear to quickly burst down the knights that are really far away another thing that could work is a machine gun for all the actor and it would be good for the knights then moving on to the next encounter the first boss fight which is the war priest obviously at this point we're going to be swapping to mostly dps based things so things like well things like bubble tether nighthawk whatever it is all the common dps supers would be really good to use in this encounter but for weapons i think there's gonna be a few things that are really good this is another ranged boss fight so i think the izzy plus rocket combo could be really good with the auto loading because that's gonna be really good for total damage output and burst dps and the other combo i could see being really good is just a linear with triple tap or four times the charm to extend your total damage output and you might even want to pair that with a sniper or even izzy itself to further extend your total damage output because this could be a pretty long boss fight and then for your primary weapon in this counter a lot of the ads are kind of in that close to mid range so this is the first encounter where i think you could really get away with using something like an smg ar or something like that to quickly clear out those ads and i think that is pretty much it for the warp priest the one thing i would probably add in is you want one person to use div just for that constant debuff yeah there might be a few people on your team using tether but tether won't last the entire time so one person using div for that constant debuff also making it easier for everyone to land their linear shots or whatever they're using would be pretty helpful now moving on to the next encounter the second boss fight golgoroth this is going to be more or less the same stuff dps supers this time i don't think you need a div user i think it's pretty easy to hit the go growth crit spot and you're gonna need all the damage you can and once again you know triple tap linears four times charm would be really good then once again you could also add in something like izzy to further increase that dps and damage output but more than likely i think just running a linear of some sort would be good enough for this encounter and for the actor this is the first encounter where there's very heavily dense adds in one spot so i think you're running a special actor weapon for example a salvo a reservoir burst fusion whatever it is would be extremely strong because there's a lot of ads in one spot just shooting one salvo would quickly clear them all out another thing to note about this encounter is for the dps supers it's kind of hard to tell what would work in destiny 2 for this encounter because you gotta be standing in the pool from the orbs to do damage to golgoroth it's hard to tell what supers would be able to hit them like would thunder crash work by the time you actually hit golgoroth itself would it still be considered in the orb and do damage it's hard to tell but i think something like a nighthawk would be pretty safe pick but you're probably gonna want multiple bubbles and wells just to have a constant buff and healing in every single spot that you have to do damage from all right so moving on to the second from last encounter the daughters which is a pretty simple encounter for this i would recommend one person using div because they definitely move around quite a lot during damage itself so if you're trying to hit them with a linear and you don't have someone using div it's gonna be extremely hard so i think having at least one div user will be very important for this encounter but once again there's a lot of range in this and orcs so i think using a scout with firefly explosive whatever it is would be extremely strong once again and for my damage output i'm using a linear kind of like the previous few encounters 
and I think my special choice will be a GL, whether that's Salvo or Blinding One. I think both would be really good. And once again, all of the common DPS supers, well, bubble, thunder crash, whatever it is. And finally, the last encounter, the final boss of the raid orcs. This encounter, I'm not convinced will be the same as it was in D1. I'm I'm thinking there's gonna be a lot of changes to this encounter because the way it works, it'll be pretty boring and easy in D2 with the different abilities we have now. But just based off how it was in D1, the things I think that will work the best is once again, ranged primaries. So for example, scouts or even pulses would work extremely well because you're gonna be standing on the plates and there's gonna be ads all over the place and you can't really move or get close to them. So a scout will be extremely helpful. And in this encounter, you never do direct damage to orcs. So you don't really need a heavy DPS weapon you just really need to kill the ogre on your side as fast as possible. And I think the best weapons to do that are going to be either linears, something like the sleeper, or even someone like 1k could be really good here just to quickly burst down that ogre the second it spawns. Then for my special slot, I'm definitely going to be using a blinding GL. And that's because, once again, there's not too many adds in this encounter, but when you have to go detonate your bomb, you're gonna be just kind of standing right there on the open if there's a lot of ads you're probably gonna die so just quickly being able to blind a bunch of stuff with a blinding gl will be extremely helpful to keep you alive then once the bomb detonates you run to the middle for the aura of immortality and from there you're good to go and you can't die but the process of just standing in your bomb being able to blind stuff i think will be very handy the other part of this encounter is the shade bubble where you have to kill the shade of orcs or whatever it's called and for this this is where i think something like a linear or even a sleeper would be better than like 1k 1k might be better for the ogres themselves but when you get into that shade obviously you're gonna burn through your ammo so fast that's probably not worth it so running you know triple tap linear or whatever it is would probably be better overall for the entire encounter and yeah i think that is pretty much it for the king's fall raid and what i plan on using myself and means I think that'll work good for all of the different encounters. Let me know down in the comments below what you plan on using in the raid. Like usual, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.